So then today you wake up and we showed you the uh, numbers, the tweets, uh, the speculation. And we have three different segments today about FSU, the ACC, the grant of rights, and what really can happen next, including Dan Wetzel at four, Bob Thompson at five, but Essen Kassim from the Tallahassee Democrat. We've had him on before, covers FSU, joins us on 365 Sports. So you're just kind of going about your business this morning, Essen, and all, all of a sudden, wham, did you see this coming? I, I kind of had an idea that something might happen before the end of the year. Did you see this coming as early as today? Um, we had a feeling it was coming. Um, it was just a matter of when it was, we were going to get the, the um, you know, get the information that was going to come. It's been a rumor for the past week. We've been digging into trying to find out. And, um, yeah, we got to practice this morning. Um, standing there wait, um, at the beginning of practice when they were doing your stretches, and all of a sudden we got an email from FSU Athletics, and it's like, there's a board meeting, trust me tomorrow. So not a shock, but one that we kind of saw coming for a while. And like you mentioned, before the end of the year, there's been a lot of talk around town about something coming up soon, and it just came up today. So, Essen, what does this uh, mean to you as opposed to, um, you know, previous discussions? So why, for those who haven't been following along, is this more of an important note than when FSU has rattled the cage uh, in previous months? Yeah, I mean, I think the um, college playoff stuff, um, definitely, I think being the ACC, which I think ironically Florida State dug their own, you know, grave a little bit in that, where they, um, you know, ripped the ACC before the season, and then kind of we're waiting here. Where's Jim Phillips to stick up for us? But um, yeah, no, um, this is different. It just feels different. I think last time was just like we want to stir the cage a little bit. We want to let people make people feel uncomfortable. But this time, it definitely feels like you know they're not just going to try and stirring the cage this time. They if, it, if they're doing something, they have to have a have plan, and that's what the, the spokesman they have some like at least some plan, something. I'm not 100 percent sure what it is, but. I am sure they have something that they're going to bring up to the committee for a vote to, to their um, board of trustees for a vote to move forward. What it is, we, we're not 100 percent sure. Is this a distraction among the team, or have they already had enough of that? Where this is no big deal. I mean, um, it's no big deal. The team is focused on the game. That's the players that have not opted out and are not are, are in the portal that are there are focused on the game. So I think they are fine. They. It's just noise to them. It's like anything else. I think I don't. They're not bothered by it. They don't. They won't care about it until something comes out of it. So, Essen, how would you describe the the last few weeks just uh, around Tallahassee and amongst the uh, the people that you've encountered when it comes to the playoff snub? I mean, what was your reaction initially when you saw that on Selection Sunday, and just how has that kind of continued to go over here in the day since? Yeah, I mean, um, it was a. Uh, my, I was shocked. Um, I honestly thought that, you know, undefeated teams should be in the playoff, especially one in a power five conference and one, you know, as big as the ACC. So I was a little shocked. I understand the four best teams argument. I just think the AC, if they, the, the committee did an awful job of trying to explain, because I could buy at least these are the four best teams, but then it doesn't make sense that Georgia's out. But yeah, that's besides the point. If, um, you know, but, um, yeah, around town, people have been shocked. It's been a, you don't want to mention the words ESPN around um, town. <laughs> um, people are still mad about that. There's conspiracy theories going around. Um, just people are still angry. There's still a lot of, um, you know, unanswered questions. I think you've seen like, you know, Rick Scott and different politicians have got involved and, it's been a lot. It's interesting to see how upset people still are. Verse gone. Uh, Keon Coleman apparently is on his way to the NFL. Not a surprise. Obviously, Jordan Travis has been out. And yet, they're still a very talented football team. Georgia's had a lot of their own. Hit the transfer portal, opt out too. Uh, it, it, a game that obviously two really good football teams that felt like they should have been a part of the playoff. What do you expect between these two when they play? I uh, I would take Georgia in the points. The difference right now, I, I just think that they have more depth to overcome the opt outs. I don't. I'm. I know Carson Beck's back. That's a huge difference. Um, I have not heard beliefs on Brock Bowers, but I just feel like Georgia still has more depth and is a team that could withstand 
see more opt-outs and stuff than Florida State. But um, I expect Florida State to go out there and try and, you know, compete. Mike and Darvell teams rarely get blown out. But um, this could be one of the situations where Georgia just is a better team right now on paper. Is there an excitement level for this game? Do you sense that? Or did the fact that the way this all went down and now all the attention being paid to to realignment, I would imagine, has that taken some of the air out of the balloon of, of what would otherwise be playing a big-time opponent in a big-time game? No, I think there's some – it's definitely been taking a lot of wind out of the sail. I don't think there's the interest that this Orange Bowl is um, is also somewhat a uh, 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 game that's been hurt by what's happened. I don't, I think there's, um, there's a lot of just interest in this game from Georgia fans. Georgia fans expect to be in the playoffs, obviously every year they've done that, you know, winning 29 in the last 30 games. Meanwhile, Florida state fans are just, it's hard to like the Mike Darvall talked to us yesterday um, or two days before practice after practice. And he just mentioned it still hurts. The, it still hurts the players. And, um, it's something they're still, it's still fresh for them. It's still fresh for the fans. And I just don't see the same excitement for this game that should be. It's, a, it's an Orange Bowl game. The 90th Orange Bowl, you know, Florida State, Georgia. It should be a fun game. It should be, you know, a lot more excitement. Just It's been wiped out in Tallahassee and across from Seminole Nation, um, Seminole Nation with fans. I, I just don't sense the same excitement about this game. that There would be there if you told them this would be the matchup last year at this time. Essen, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Essen Kassam with the Tallahassee Democrat with us on the story today about Florida State. Now, one of the two things you got to think about here.